What's up, Instagram? How would you like to talk with the spa doctor, medical doctor who's looking at how you make your skin work better? I'm interested in anti-aging, interested in living a long time, interested in having skin that works and looks like it should look, but more importantly, works like it should work. So let's learn. This is uh, Trevor Cates. I'm gonna invite her in real quick. Give me one second. Here she is, sending request. Gopal says hello. De-stress with Druvy. All right, into the light dot podcast. You get to meet me in June. Woohoo! You guys signed up for the biohacking conference as we wait for Trevor to, to come in. Uh, it's at biohackingconference.com and it's coming up on the 8th. This is the biggest conference I've ever put on by far. I think we'll probably have somewhere around 10,000 or more people. So it's going to be a really fun day. And so I'm getting all prepped with my team. We're having so much fun. And if you're not signed up for it, sign up. And if you don't know about the box, the, the limited edition box worth more than $600 worth of stuff, and it'll send it to you for way less than that cost. And when you sign up for the box right now, you can actually get a free ticket. So check it out by hackingcovers.com. Trevor, where are you, spa doctor, my friend? Trevor, where are you? Well, oh, it says unable to join. She's going to ask to do it. Hey, 22 here now is in Albuquerque. I was born in Albuquerque. I like Albuquerque. Oh, Allison, I like your question. Let's just do a Q&A until Trevor comes in. Hydrogen nebulizer is safe for pregnancy. I suppose you mean hydrogen peroxide versus hydrogen, because you can breathe hydrogen gas, which is almost certainly safe during pregnancy, but hydrogen peroxide to breathe nebulized the way Dr. Mercola talked about it, the way Dr. Schallenberg talked about it on my show. Absolutely. Everything that I know of says, unless you have some weird lung condition, but as always, you should always ask your doctor before you do anything, including use lotion, because that hasn't been clinically proven safe either. That actually happened once. Doctor's like, I said, should I take this after this procedure? And he goes, well, there's no studies showing it's safe. And I go, well, who cares? Should I take it? He goes, I can't tell you without a, a study. And I said, but there's no study saying lotion is safe, but you think it's okay to use lotion? And he goes, good question. Oh, all right. We're talking about hydrogen peroxide, and there's a comment in here that's dangerous, and I got to call you guys out on this. Um, Zoa... Xadu, it's talking about 32% food grade. No, if you nebulize 32% uh, hydrogen peroxide, you could probably die and have lung scarring. You are talking about less than 3% and ideally medical grade. That would be uh, that would be preferable. What that means is you get some saline solution, you put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in and you nebulize that. And that's what Dr. Mercola, Dr. Schallenberg talked about. The highest percent anyone has ever recommended breathing as a mist in a nebulizer is 3%. Uh, and that's considered relatively high. Most people do 1.5%. So I'm not doing any medical advice. This is not a medical procedure. This is actually a home health procedure. But just understand, you can hurt yourself with most things at your house, including water. If you drink too much of it, you'll run out of salt and you'll die. So don't do that either. All right, Alex, what do you think about NMN and resveratrol for aging? There's tons of podcasts on Bulletproof Radio. Short version, you should take them both and probably NR and probably NICE. And, and there's a, a new podcast coming out with the founder of a company called New Cheeto where we talk about recycling NAD. Jackster, my number one biohack. Man, I wish I knew the answer to that one. It depends on the goal you're looking for. And I always teach people track what you hack. So if you want to improve your sleep, you start tracking your sleep and then you hack your sleep. So my number one biohack for sleep is going to be different than if I'm hacking weight loss. So for weight loss and energy, intermittent fasting and bulletproof coffee, I'm kind of well known for that. And I talk about it a lot, not because I need you to buy another cup of bulletproof coffee. There's lots of that in the world now, um, but because it'll probably make a big difference. But if you're looking at sleep, it's probably going to be like the True Dark glasses. There's patented sleep glasses, not just blue blocking, the truedark.com. Uh, and I wrote some of those patents. These are the daytime ones you wear. The ones at night are uh, a combination of different filters because blue blocking at night isn't enough. And blue blocking during the day is too much if you block it all. So that's probably the thing that's raised my deep sleep the most. Have I done the, the nebulizer myself? Sherry, absolutely. I've done it quite a bit. Come into awesome. How am I feeling? I'm actually feeling pretty good today. Last night was weird. I had a, a dinner with friends 
which is exceptionally rare in these times. I'm opening a new farm to table restaurant. It's called Upgrade Cafe in Victoria, BC next week. So the restaurant's not open yet, but I was meeting a couple of friends. So we ended up uh, saying, well, heck, let's just get takeout. So we ended up having takeout sushi at my restaurant when it was still closed because the kitchen wasn't open yet. So I stayed out late, uh, later than I should, drove home as an hour away from my house. Uh, and I got home like, I should do like a sauna or something. I just wasn't sleepy. So I got four hours and 12 minutes of sleep. I go, oh, Dave, you should be a zombie. But check this out. An hour and 58 minutes of deep sleep and an hour and two minutes of REM in four and a half hours. So do I feel pretty good? Yeah. Do I have slight bags under my eyes from the sauna that I did last night? Actually, yeah, because it was really hot in a short period of time and then I went to sleep. But overall, I feel great. Rob says, ask your doctor if you have to wear a mask in the shower. Yes. You have to wear two masks in the shower. And the cool thing is you can also wear the mask like an extra pair of underwear. It turns out there's people making swimsuits out of masks. It's a, it's a very attractive look, apparently. Um, osteoporosis from Renee. So Renee, osteoporosis, in large part, vitamin D and vitamin K2 together help for most people, but you need sunshine to sulfate the vitamin D. So even if you take the pills, you got to get some, just 20 minutes is fine, ideally in the morning. Um, that's a big deal. And then on top of that, I would like to say high impact exercise. The problem is high impact exercise wrecks your joints over time. So it is this weight bearing exercise. And some of the stuff that I do at Upgrade Labs flexes your bone. So even isometric exercise or really heavy exercise. And that bone flexion raises something called BMP, bone morphogenic protein. So if you want to fix this, it doesn't take very much of that. You can literally get in a doorway and push really hard against something that won't move. I mean, hard, like there's a car falling in you kind of hard. You do that for five seconds, even a few times a week, and it changes that hormone throughout the body. But bone morphogenic protein, and of course, you need enough protein, collagen, the scaffolding, you need calcium, magnesium, stuff like that. But osteoporosis is generally hackable. All right. Uh, come into awesome. Am I working too hard? No, actually, um, I was out late, like with friends. We had a four and a half hour dinner. And that was when I went to bed late. All right. Should you use lotion though, Regina? <laughs> it depends what's in the lotion, doesn't it? Um, Judy Shale, what do you think of mold in the body? You know, I've written, oh, here. No, Trevor's trying to come in on this. Let's see if she comes in now. Trevor, are you going to come in now? I'm trying to get her in. Come on, Trevor. You can do it. Yay, there she is. Hi. Hey, Trevor, the spa, Dr. Cates. Good Hi. to see you. Good to see you too. I was over on my Instagram live doing, waiting for you to join me. Oh, did I have it on the wrong channel? <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> so we're all good. We're connected now. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. Oh, well, you're on my channel. I guess I was supposed to join your channel. See, so this is, I should probably read my calendar better. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, oh well. Guys, uh, uh, I have known Trevor for quite a long time, and she, what's the name, which, which of the high-end hotels did you used to be the spa doctor for, like the... Waldorf Astoria and Park See, City. I, I, it was at Waldorf for four seasons, but anyway, she's like in charge of like fancy people's skin for a long time, and now <laughs> you run your own, you're in your own clinic, yeah. and have your own line of skincare stuff, and uh, you're just like, you know a lot of stuff, and, and you're a good person, so I'm like, you should be on it. Let's talk about skin. And our mutual friend, Rachel Varga, who's been on the podcast this year, going, can't wait for it. <laughs> great, great. Well, um, I, I've been enjoying listening to you, Dave. Always, always interesting to hear about what you're doing next and all the little biohacking tips that, that you've got going on. All right, so are you interviewing me or am I interviewing you? I'm so confused. I don't right. know. Well, now, so, it's, uh, now it looks like the, the roles have reversed. Check, speaking of role reversal, check out this board on the road guy. It's like, is this a male? All right, let me let me help you out. Okay, this is a male, and the other person is a female board on the road. And if you're having a really hard time with that, there's a thing called an eye exam that you could probably get. Right. And if not, I can teach you how to hack your eyes as well. And Trevor can tell you what kind of night cream to put around your eyes so that they don't get all swollen shut like they probably are now. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I throw people with my name, my first name being Trevor, that people are like, wait, that's, that's a guy's name. You're not supposed to have that name. <laughs> All right. So ask, I don't know, you wanted to interview me apparently, and I just started on my channel because that's what people always do. <laughs> so I did it wrong, guys. I'm taking the blame for this. But Trevor, what do you want to know? Or what do we want to know? I don't know. You guys ask her questions. That's the wine, brother. You know, it was sake. Like, we on, should was... talk about um, 
I think we should talk about biohacking for skin. Like, let's talk about some of the things that we we both know to be really great for skin. Because I know you talk about how you're going to live to be 199? 100 and gazillion. <laughs> so when you're going to live that long, you, your skin has to keep up with you, right? In fact, I, I did some math and there's a degree of collagen loss in the skin of, of basically um, just the amount of protein in your skin that goes down every year as you age. And if you're going to live to 180 and you don't do something about it, you'll have 17% of your skin thickness left, which means you could probably see your liver and your ribs through your skin. And I don't really think that's the, the Mr. Smithers kind of look I'm going for. Uh, as I age. So for me, taking care of the skin as an organ, making sure it it replaces itself is really important. So there's a lot of questions here about Botox. What do you think? Is Botox a good thing for your skin or a bad thing for your skin? Well, when we're talking about what does Botox do, it's, well, Botox is, uh, botulinum is a neurotoxin. In fact, I actually had a patient when I was in Santa Barbara that had botulism poisoning as a child and ended up with paralysis and, and things. So it's, you know, it's very toxic ingredient um, or substance that occurs nat. It is a natural substance, occurs in nature, but it's a neurotoxin. And then of course the um, botulism was found that, you know, the poisoning and canned foods and a bunch of people died, but it's also used as um, an Botox as an injection to kind of, you know, freeze the muscle so that it, diminishes this the you know wrinkles like they disappear because the muscles can't create the uh the wrinkles my you know and it typically it's been said it's safe now the concern that i have is what if it what if it's not like there are a lot of things that we've said for many years you know doctors would recommend smoking cigarettes people doctors would say many things that were wait safe. that's not safe smoking <laughs> cigarettes <laughs> Crisco oil, yeah, like definitely eat Crisco oil. Yeah, all of that good stuff. There. You can put it on your face too. It's so good for everything. safe for you. And then all of a sudden, some study comes out that it crosses the blood brain barrier. So maybe it's not so safe. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think that, I mean, everybody is using it these days. It's so popular and so trendy, but I'm starting. The other thing is that I start trying to figure out what my girlfriends are thinking or what's happening because I can't see their expressions anymore. Are they surprised? Are they angry? Are they sad? I can't tell. <laughs> um, you can certainly overdo it. There are studies, I think Rachel talked about them uh, when she was on the show, that show a thickening of collagen in response to either Botox, and Botox has a bunch of proteins in it that you probably don't want, but there's just the pure protein-free version whose name I don't remember anymore. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know. I'm still not convinced that Botox is completely safe. And also, like, what kind of look are we going for anyway? So, I mean, I'm for me, I prefer the more natural look. And, you know, I've got wrinkles here. I kind of like them because, I don't know, there were signs that I've been, you know, going out in the sun and I've been smiling and laughing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, basically, you want to look natural. You don't want to look like a, a glass, uh, you know, a, a glass <laughs> doll for sure. Uh, but also people don't want lots of wrinkles as they age. So for me, it's how do you have more moisture and more thickening in your skin, right? And I'm right. I'm definitely interested in, in peptides uh, and putting the right oils. And mostly it takes seven years to replace the collagen in your body or to replace 50% of it. So the half-life of collagen is that. I have been taking a couple of scoops or more of the Bulletproof Collagen, and I'm the guy who made collagen famous. Like it was a non-ingredient for protein powders 10 years ago. And uh, I've been doing this reliably because of the anti-aging nonprofit research stuff that I've done. And I think it actually makes a difference. And people say, oh, my hair grows faster. Um, you know, my skin is looking better. And there's studies in mice that show, and they're not human studies because seven years is a long time, but in mice, they do show increases in skin thickness when they eat more collagen. So I think it's a pretty good idea to eat this stuff and to eat healthy fats. Because, I mean, Trevor, what happens if you have a client who eats French fries, you know, fried in <laughs> God knows what oil? Well, oxidative damage, that speeds up the aging process. So definitely, definitely not something you want to know. French fries are definitely not 
the way you want to go. But yeah, you know, it's really both internally and externally what you do with your skin. And I think, you know, you and I both are big fans of that, of talking about things like collagen, taking collagen supplements. I have a collagen supplement too, and, and I, I take mine every day as well. And we want to make sure that we're nourishing our bodies from the inside out with the healthy oils, the healthy fats, antioxidants that help prevent oxidative damage or like slow down that oxidative damage effect. And, and then we also want to use things on the outside that hydrate our skin, that help protect our skin, that keep the collagen from breaking down faster. And that includes you know, protecting from too much sun exposure. All of those things are important. And, and also um, exposure to toxins, air pollution, all of those things, we want to make sure that we're protecting our, our skin from that, both internally and externally. And, um, you know, I think, too, as we get older, we have to work a little bit harder with that. And that's part of like where biohacking comes in, where, you know, you can still you just eat more of those healthy foods, start taking more supplements, also using a little bit more active skincare products. And then also you've got um, you've got some laser light therapy stuff too, don't you? Yeah, the the True Light uh, device. True Light's a company I started five years ago because I find light therapy it's very hard to find the right frequencies. And we use two kinds of red and infrared, which are, you can find those all over the place. But we add amber, and there's really good studies about amber and small blood vessels and fine lines. So I'll literally lay there and like put the panel either in front of my face or just like on half my face and then turn it over. And I notice a difference from that. And it also has a pulsing thing. And that's this shop, I think it's shop truelight.com, but it's called True Light, T-R-U-E. And I really notice a difference from light therapy. And it's something we do at Upgrade Labs as well. And so I, I feel like if you get a signal in that says that, okay, you need to be able to, to grow and get this energy from the light and the stimulation, and you have topical stuff, and you have raw ingredients because you've been eating collagen and the right fats, maybe your skin will be healthier than someone who just ate french fries and didn't do anything else. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, you and Rachel and all my other skincare friends are like, Dave, you have to put sunscreen on. Sunscreen gets in your eyes and feels like crap and it looks stupid on camera, even if it's mineral sunscreen. And sunscreen sucks because I like my UV rays because they're good for you in small doses. So how the heck are you supposed to put on sunscreen every single morning without having weird and glowy and stuff like that? Oh, you didn't hear my question, did you? Um, okay, no, I heard you kind of froze there for a second. Okay. It was about sun sunscreen. And um, it's a great question. People ask me about sunscreen all the time. And I, and I live in Park City, Utah. We have a lot of sun here. I'm a big outdoor doors person. I ski, mountain bike, wake surf, do all, all of that kind of fun stuff. And I, I appreciate sun. And in fact, we, we need sun exposure without some, sometimes without sunscreen because we need vitamin D. That's one of the best ways to get vitamin D. And when we wear sunscreen, we block that ability for our, our bodies to produce vitamin D. So we do need some exposure. The question is how much do we need for healthy and then how much do we need to protect? And then how do we protect, right? Those are the big questions. And, and where do you get it is a question too. Where do you like, get sun? No, like does it have to be on your face? In, in other words, like if you, if you expose your butt to the sun and it gets brown spots, nobody cares really. Um, but if you expose your face, yeah. So you might want to choose where the sun hits your skin is what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. So we get the most amount of exposure on our face and the tops of our hands, our neck, our chest, because we're, those are the areas that are exposed year round when we're driving a car. Then you think about the tops of your hands that comes through the sunlight comes through the glass, all of that. So what I tell people is to really pay attention to your face, your neck, your chest, the tops of your hands in particular. With your arms and your legs, you could get some, you know, go out into the sun without sunscreen and get some nice um, vitamin D, but you really only need to go out in the sun like 10 minutes a few times a week on a sunny day. Um, and you don't need to go in the middle of the day when the sun is the harshest to get, you know, that's all you need to really to get a good dose of vitamin D. Now it really varies where in the world you are, like where I am, I'm close to the sun, so I don't need quite as much. I'm also very fair, so I also don't need as much sun, sun 
exposure. Um, so those are the, some of the things that um, we want to look at. And then, of course, when it comes to vitamin D, you can easily get your vitamin D levels tested, get your blood work done, ask, ask your doctor for 25 hydroxy vitamin D and see what your levels are because you might be okay. You may not need that extra sun. And then if your levels are low, then take a supplement. D Dave, you probably have a vitamin D supplement, right? Oh, geez, who would ever imagine? Yeah, I, the <laughs> Bulletproof ADK has the vitamin K that you really should be taking with vitamin D This in yeah. the same supplement. Yeah, but, so, I, but then, I'm like, getting, but, yeah, go keep ahead. going. Keep, it sounds like you got something important. What is okay, that? well, no, I was just going to say, but then, you know, with the protecting your your skin with, you know, hats, cover-ups, try not to go out right in the middle of the day, try and go out earlier or later. Um, and, uh you know, using a mineral-based sunscreen is way better than the chemical sunscreens because then you get away from endocrine-disrupting chemicals like oxybenzone. You're also getting away from some of the, um, the chemicals that we know are damaging for the environment, like that are now being banned and they're banned in Hawaii and, and things. So I just put straight DDT on my forehead. It looks so good. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just use some gasoline, whatever. Um, no, but the, the zinc oxide sunscreens are the best option. And I like the tinted ones. It's okay for men to use them too. But the nice thing about the tint is they're not that like pasty white. They have some color to them so that you can kind of match them for your skin tone. And just keep an eye out for, you know, the other ingredients too. Like you want to still stay away from fragrance and parabens and mineral oil, dimethicone, those kinds of things. Um, definitely, I would be concerned. Most sunscreens I wouldn't want to put on my face. And I know you've, you've given me some good, uh, some good sunscreens. Rachel's given me some. So there are some that, that you know, mostly zinc based or mineral based. Um, but still, I'm like, I don't want to get in my eyes because it makes my eyes get all weird. And I'm seeing some other don't questions put it here. In your, don't put it on your eyelids. Okay, good. I, I kind of leave a circle around my eyes, <laughs> but then I have like nicely tinted and then my eyes are a slightly different color. I've got like reverse raccoon. I, I don't know. I, it's a lot of work. Like I'm a guy. I just want to like smear one thing on my face in the morning and be done. And, like I'm just lucky I shaved that morning. Like, like I, right. I feel like a lot of guys, you know, that's about what we're going to do. And you might convince us to wash our face every morning if we're not in the shower. Well, like, and you know, <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create a really simple skincare system. A lot of guys love the Spot Doctor skincare system because it's so simple. And as I, when, when I told you how to use my products, I told you about this, like, just use the cleanser to wash your face. And then steps two, three, and four, put them all in your hand together, rub them, and then rub them on together. So then it's like just two steps. It's super easy. <laughs> All right. Now, now I'm seeing a couple more questions coming through here. So as you know, uh, I was in the, the New York Daily News or Post or something uh, from a habit of butthole sunning. And, and people are asking, you know, is that actually a thing? Is what a thing? Sorry, I couldn't hear what you but, said. Butthole sunning, like where you, you expose oh. all of you. You know, there was an Instagram thing. I was, I was like briefly famous for a minute because right. I was making fun of someone else for doing it. <laughs> I saw that. I, saw, I remember so seeing that. As a skin doctor, is there any benefit to exposing other various parts of the body between the legs in men or women to the sun? A real question. That's you only know, kind of funny. It's, it's a really good question. I haven't looked at the research on this one. So I'm just going to make some assumptions here based upon what I know about the body. And so you're science. going to make fun of me is what you're saying. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there is a reason why, you know, because it's where the sun doesn't shine, right? So we maybe we do need a little extra exposure in places where we don't typically get sun. I mean, I don't think it's such a bad idea, but you might be more likely. Did you just say but? It might be but. <laughs> I did say but. You did on purpose, right? I did. You're making me laugh. Okay, keep going. <laughs> but um, be careful because you might get sunburned. I did that, man. It's like eating jalapenos. <laughs> Don't do that. It's, it's just not. <laughs> that is not a good place to get sunburned. So if you do it, just be mindful of the time. <laughs> um, there you go. I, I like that advice. And there is a study or two that says vitamin or sun, sunshine on the testes increases testosterone, and it probably does. So it's like, yeah, sure. But that's probably less important because a few people are going to get sunburned frequently enough to have wrinkles there. And if you have wrinkles there, you're not even going to be able to see them. So it's okay. So let's talk about the other two questions that are here. Um, people are asking about um, what you do for sun damage. So how do you reverse sun damage on skin? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I mean, first of all, you want to try and um, 
not have it happen, prevent it from happening. Of course, that's the first thing, wearing um, a, a mineral sunscreen. But um, when you get sun damage, I mean, the first thing is with uh, like a sunburn, then you, good old fashioned aloe is one of my favorite things for, for, um, for healing the skin with a sunburn. And uh, you, you can get fresh aloe plant. There's also aloe in my skincare line, but also there's some really great, great plant-based oil. So whenever I have someone that's like, oops, I spent too much time in the sun. Now I'm like, burnt and I'm peeling, I'll have them use my step two and step four of my four step skincare system. They're, they're really rich in antioxidants and plant-based oils that immediately will help heal the skin. So hydration, antioxidants, those are key, both internally and externally. And I also love um, astaxanthin is a great supplement to take internally to help protect um, the, uh, the, the skin from the inside out, from the sun damage. And you can, um, you know, the, the astaxanthin, ideally you take it before you go in the sun, but you could also take it afterwards. And yeah. with that uneven skin tone, hyperpigmentation, one of the biggest things is antioxidants, both internally and, and externally. One of the things I do that I think helps my eyes and my skin, I make a supplement called Eye Armor uh, for Bulletproof, uh, or say I formulated one, Bulletproof makes it. And it's got high doses of astaxanthin in it. And I take five of those a day, which is way above the recommended dose and I have for a long time. And I have noticed uh, for actually going back 15 years, when I'm on high dose astaxanthin and um, low, dose, um, uh, low dose omega-6 oils. So if you're eating a lot of the inflammatory seed oils, you're just going to get sun damage. You, you don't have resilience. But if you're eating more grass-fed butter, animal fats and stuff like that from grass-fed animals, and the omega-3s, but not the 6s, and you're taking astaxanthin, your resilience in the sun is ridiculous. Like you can be at 5,000 feet for a couple hours, and like, oh, no problem. Whereas growing up in Albuquerque, I would have just been completely crisped as a kid, but I was, you know, the puffy, you know, give me liquid margarine kid, because that's what I thought it would be. Yeah. Somebody just asked about melasma, and what we're talking about is it's same, same things apply, like the astaxanthin, the antioxidants, protecting your skin from, uh, you know, the sun going, you know, wearing a good sunscreen. Those are all important, but really that hyperpigmentation, melasma, sun damage, all of that, um, you can benefit from the things we were just talking about. Astaxanthin, A-S-T-A-X-A-N-T-H-A-N. So Asta, X-A-N, then. There you go. Jenny Garn just posted it. Thank you. It's a weird one. There's also zeanthanin, which goes along with it, which is in eye armor, which comes from marigold that probably has a skin effect as well, but astaxanthin is best known for UV protection. Yeah. What foods are high in it? I don't know you get in any foods yeah. other than like salmon and red algae or something. Yeah, so shellfish, salmon, it's that pink color, that pink color yeah, in there, like that, sockeye. that's how you know it has astaxanthin, yeah. Uh, Crazy Kate wants to know if other companies can carry your skincare line. Yes, yes. Just reach right. out to me at the spa doctor. DM her. Yeah. All right. And Jen Lala is like, just bought the Bulletproof Vanilla Collagen Protein. Woohoo. Thank you. All right, guys, you have one more question for Dr. Kate. So I'm supposed to go have lunch now because I'm breaking my fast. Let's see. Oh. Eight hours until two. What is it? Eight to two, whatever that is. Eight to eight. Yeah. Let's... yeah. I'm going to go eat soon. Yeah. But uh, one more question. What can we do? Everyone says you have lovely teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've never had braces. Freddie said it. I'm just reading it. <laughs> I know. Lovely teeth. Well, there you Thank go. You. you did something right, Trevor. <laughs> um, and yes, we, we can ship to Canada. You made her blush, Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor and I are actually like real friends <laughs> and we hang out yes, so I can totally not. tease her in ways that I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't tease someone I didn't know well. I'm not going to offend her. I um, I know, and it's it's so right. sad that we don't get to see each other that much. I miss you, Dave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I miss you too, Trevor. We got to hang out some more. All right, let's see. One more question. It's from Hey Veronica. What are some of the garbage texts you should avoid? Like, what's a piece of skin tech that's probably bad? I'm sorry. Say, so what was the what? The garbage tech, like like tech that people are selling for the skin that isn't really good for you. Uh, you know, there's a lot, actually. I mean, really, when it comes to um, products, 
you really want to look at the ingredients because a lot of times they'll feature like one ingredient that's really, really great. But then you look at the rest of the ingredients and there's really not a lot of that one potent special ingredient in there and there's a bunch of crap. So that's one thing to look out for. And then when it comes to all like the gadgets and gizmos, as you know, Dave, you know, there's, there's a ton of junk out there, but there actually is some stuff that can be beneficial and can help. And I can tell you, what's really, really important is the stuff you do on a daily basis. That's what's really important. That's when it adds up. When you're using like a really good skincare system every day, what are, are you eating really healthy things? You're getting those antioxidants and the great oils every day or as much as possible. That's the biggest thing. I know a lot of times people say like, you know, a few times a year they do something special for their skin, but that's not going to make up for all the stuff you've done um, on a daily basis that's actually been harmful for your body and your skin. I, I love that. Um, and that seems very accurate to me. Um, I'm going to name two things. Um, the fascia blaster is a very bad idea. This is like this weird thing and you go and you break up your fascia that is a signaling thing in the body. So don't do that. There's people who swear by it. There's many people with lawsuits. And then there's a really important question from Kim D. Fit, um, who's asked about skin tags. And Guys, skin tags are a sign they have high blood sugar. They're straight up sign of that. When I was a teenager and I was obese, I had skin tags all over the place. They go away when you fix your metabolism. I'm going to invite you guys. Go to fastthisway.com and there is a fasting challenge. I will teach you everything in the book, even if you don't buy the book, for free as a gift. Fastthisway.com. 60,000 people have, have signed up for this and gone through it. There's a whole active community. I'll teach you over two weeks how to change when you eat, even if you don't change what you eat, so you get control of your metabolism. Give yourself six months of controlled blood sugar, never being hungry the whole time, and your skin tags will actually go away all on their own. You don't have to cut them off. It's pretty ridiculous. Am I lying, Trevor? I know. No, it's great. It's amazing. And, you know, definitely skin tags. Sometimes you have to do, like, some of them won't just disappear. You have to like do the lift and snip that doctors, doctors can just the take big ones. Off. Yeah. The big ones. They don't just go away. You, you don't need a doctor for that. Just get a pair of nail scissors and cut them off. It doesn't even hurt. They, have, they have a tiny little out. thing. No, no, no. It's easy. <laughs> You're straight raising billing. You doctors, you're all the same. Get your own tank of liquid nitrogen. Pour it on there. <laughs> no, just go, go get your doctor. Go just get your skin check done once a year. If you have skin tags, they can clip those off really easily and then just balance your blood sugar so you don't have any more because it's so true. I remember with my first pregnancy, my blood sugar was off and I had all kinds of skin tags. I was in naturopathic medical school at the time. I hadn't quite figured that out yet. But then when I learned with my other two, I didn't have any problem and haven't had any more skin tags since then. No. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. All Guys, right, we'll go get some Trevor food, Dave. Kates. All right, uh, we're going to hang out in person as soon as all this ridiculous travel restriction that doesn't seem to change anything ex except making us uncomfortable. As soon as we end that, uh, we'll go hang out. <laughs> See you guys all later. <laughs> Bye.